of Suzuka in Japan, some 30 miles from Nagoya. A big crowd out on a sunny afternoon, not quite the Formula One intensity, but still very interested spectators, each with their own special favourites among the 11 cars lined up on the grid, ready to go on the warm-up lap for the 1,000-kilometre race, a race that will last around five and a half hours, and the drivers and teams expecting to have to lap this circuit in around about 1 minute 50 would be a good time. But in this heat, it would also mean that the drivers would have to swap seats. of Suzuka in Japan, some 30 miles from Nagoya. A big crowd out on a sunny afternoon, not quite the Formula One intensity, but still very interested spectators, each with their own special favourites among the 11 cars lined up on the grid, ready to go on the warm-up lap for the 1,000-kilometre race, a race that will last around five and a half hours and the drivers and teams expecting to have to lap this circuit in around about 1 minute 50 would be a good time. But in this heat, it would also mean that the drivers would have to swap seats for seven or eight times over the five and a half hour duration of the whole race. Suzuka, a figure of eight track, difficult, demanding, grueling in this heat, and a driver fatigued or who loses concentration and gets a couple of inches offline, that could spell disaster. This Suzuka track built 30 years ago and now, of course, in use as the Honda test track. It's Peugeot leading the way in the team's championship after the win in the Jewel of the Crown at Le Mans and their two lead drivers Yannick Dalmas and Derek Warwick leading the way as far as the driver's title chase is concerned Warwick on course to become the third British driver to clinch the title as we look back from Toyota number eight and over Andy Wallace's shoulder forward down the Suzuka track still coming round to complete the warm-up lap on this three and a half mile circuit 11 cars two Peugeots and two Toyotas familiar visitors in the championship all season also the Euro racing Lolas and competing in their home country alongside the Toyotas of course will be the solitary Mazda number five the pace car pulls off the Peugeot of Philippe Alio and the number one car of Derek Warwick making their way slowly round towards the start. Away they go, pursued by the Toyota of Jeff Lees and the number eight car of Andy Wallace. But thundering down the straight comes the Peugeot of Philippe Alio, Derek Warwick in the second Peugeot, and Jeff Lees, Andy Wallace and Jeff Krosnoff in the 44 car that's the turbocharged Nissan which everybody expects will struggle to actually get to the finish 171 laps to go about five and a half hours in really grueling conditions Alio Warwick then the Toyota of Jeff Lees Jeff Lees back in the country where he spent the bulk of his racing career after starting off in Europe in Formula 2 and having a couple of opportunities in Formula 1 he spent most of his time racing in Japan in sports cars and Formula 3000 returned to the World Sports Car Championship full time in 1992 and is now back at Suzuka and hoping for victory to keep the pressure on Peugeot at the top of the championship here you get some idea as we look from the number eight Toyota currently running in fourth place Andy Wallace in the opening stint here the former Jaguar driver some idea of just how confined these cockpits are cars in the world sports car championship Toyota 
threatening that they won't compete in a full season in sports car racing next year. They might just settle on going to Le Mans to win the 24-hour title, something that they've never done. And uh, would obviously love to follow in the footsteps of Mazda and, of course, Nissan, who won a 24-hour title at Daytona earlier this year. The Suzuka track, not renowned for overtaking manoeuvres, very tight, very quick, and extremely safe, but not the sort of circuit where you would expect huge dicing battles between a whole series of cars. It was designed by the Dutchman, John Hugenholtz, a man who was responsible for building Zandvoort in the Netherlands. And this one of the very rare figure of eight tracks that you'll find in use in international motor racing at the present day. Alio leads. Warwick with thoughts of that world title in second place. Jeff Lees retains third. And Andy Wallace still in fourth. So Peugeot, Peugeot, followed by Toyota and Toyota. And this very much the battle that we've seen throughout the season in the four rounds prior to Suzuka. Qualifying, the Peugeots were running times of around about 1.45, extremely quick around the Suzuka circuit. Certainly be impossible for them to get within about five or six seconds of that. That will be the closest that they would get to their qualifying times in the actual race, laden with fuel and in actual race trim. 44 in fifth place was the Jeff Krosnov car. He, of course, is partnered by his rival from Japanese Formula 3000 racing. In fact, the man who's leading the championship at the moment, Martini. So rivals as teammates at Suzuka. Jeff Krosnov in the 44 Nissan. Andy Wallace in Toyota number eight, running in fourth place. Wallace on this occasion, without his regular partner, Jan Lammers. Lammers, one of the crew of the Toyota number seven, along with Jeff Lees and David Brabham. Lammers, in fact, will be appearing in Formula One with the March team later in the season. Meanwhile, Wallace is up with one of the back markers, and this is the number 43, the Japanese crewed British Barn International Ford engined car out of the Japanese Sports Car Championship. Toyota making short work of that. Andy Wallace, one of those rare drivers who's actually clinched the endurance title at three separate big races, Daytona, Le Mans and Sebring. Rare achievement. Here's Jeff Lees in Toyota number seven, running in third place behind the two Peugeots and staying in touch with the number one car of Derek Warwick. So the Toyota proving that around the Suzuka circuit it is a match and we could well see a good race developing over the five and a half, six hours that this 1,000 kilometer race is scheduled to last. Huge wide open spaces, big runoff areas and the Toyota, around that long, sweeping, tight left-hander. Toyota looking as though it's got better grip than the Peugeot. There's Alio out in front. Still the very early stages, but Alio running at a slightly quicker pace than teammate Warwick. Warwick and Lees. Warwick now 38 years old, still harbouring hopes of getting back into Formula One racing. Meanwhile, Jeff Lees 
who's 41, sees his future very much as a driver in the World Sports Car Championship. They see the gap between Peugeot 2 and 1, first and second place. And also an illustration of just how difficult it is with these short straights and tight bends to get on terms. There's the solitary Mazda being pursued by the Nissan. Mauricio Sandro Sala with Jeff Krosnov right on his tail. Fifth and sixth they're running with the Euro Racing Lola number four, Jesus Perea in seventh place. Not quite up with this battle as yet. And the Nissan from the Japanese Sports Car Championship running well in the early stages. Question mark over its longevity. Mazda, meanwhile, being piloted by Mauricio Sandro Sala. And Sala's two teammates, Alex Caffey and uh, Takashi Yorino, familiar competitor at Le Mans. 43 into the pits is the British barn car that we saw going slowly round, being lapped by Jeff Krosnoff in the 44 Nissan. That's an early pit caller. Krosnoff now looking to claim that fifth place from the Mazda. Just the one Mazda running at Suzuka. Remember that, of course, this team is European-based. They've run two cars in most of the European rounds but only one in their home country Krosnov now in a position to attack pulls out of the slipstream holds the racing line slips in front the Mazda knows that it's beaten settles for sixth place so apart from the battle up front which Alio at the moment has uh, completely dominated in Peugeot number two. Battles down the field too, and Krosnov at the moment, very much the star of the early stages here at Suzuka. Round five of the World Sports Car Championship. Lap 20, lead car in the pits. Philippe Alio brought it in for its regular stop, but it's been more than that. Changed tyres, refuelled but also some attention under the engine cover. Change of drivers, Mauro Baldi now at the wheel instead of Fili Balio, and a steering wheel change there. We understand from the pits that Fili Balio has been complaining about the handling of this car, suggesting that something is wrong with the power steering mechanism. The revolutionary introduction on the Peugeot 905 in the championship this year. So a change of steering wheel, perhaps that might soothe the problem rather than solve it. And the number two Peugeot, after a lengthy stop, resumes in the hands of Mauro Baldi. Having lost the lead, which is now being contested by teammate Derek Warwick in Peugeot number one. And Jeff Lees, there they are, right behind Baldi as he pulled out of the pits. Warwick swept through, so too Lees. Baldi obviously on those uh, tyres which are not quite up to race temperature yet and uh, Warwick with a bit of quick thinking sweeping on the inside as uh, Baldi moved out of the pits and across the track. Into the pits comes the third place car Andy Wallace in Toyota number eight. Wallace quickly out, an old hand at this game now having uh, made his debut in sports car racing with Jaguar almost five years ago now. Juan Lamont, his first attempt in climbs Sakaya. His first run in the sports car championship with Toyota this year. First time he'll be out in anger. Again, the scheduled stop as he's belted in. How important that is. Yannick Dalmas will testify to that after his problems with the seat belts and Monza particularly also at Silverstone out goes Sakaya 
down the bumpy old pit lane and they should rejoin that Wallace Atchison and now Sakaya driven car in third place first pit stop for the Mazda Warwick leading as the Toyota number seven is due a pit stop so Derek Warwick in Peugeot number one can build up a comfortable lead and a wee bit of breathing space perhaps he can now start to dream of that world driver's sports car title the one which has eluded him on two occasions most notably last year when he would have won along with his teammate Theo Farby but for points docked at Silverstone for changing cars and this time it seems no mistake Derek Warwick born in Hampshire in England now living in Jersey would dearly love to get back into single-seater racing whether it's with Formula One or in America out goes the Jeff Lee's number seven car which is now in the hands of Jan Lammers that's also running in second place as the Mazda exits as well and that's been handed over by Sala to Alex Caffey Warwick also due a pit stop at any moment that car has been running absolutely perfectly although in the early stages just a split second a lap slower than teammate Philippe Alio. Alio though once he went into the pits for attention to what was a steering problem was delayed and dropped eventually to seventh place rapidly making up ground through the field now though in the hands of Mauro Baldi Derek Warwick into the pits Yannick Dalmas is waiting down there to take over so Derek Warwick brings that car in Warwick who's been very much the ambassador for the sports car championship this year said a lot of great things about it and deservedly on his way to the title now here's a dice midfield runner Mazda number five in sixth place that's the Lammers Toyota number seven running second and ahead of them one of the back markers the Euro Racing Lola number four currently in seventh place so they're easily through there past Perea and Lammers now looking to ease past the Mazda meanwhile it's Dalmas on his way down the pit lane Derek Warwick had built up considerable lead and Dalmas has the luxury of rejoining after the pit stop still in first place there goes Lammers running second now ahead of Caffey on the road Caffey down there in sixth place in the Mazda David Brabham who used to be Derek Warwick's teammate at Jaguar a year ago now his opponent in the Toyota Lammers, meanwhile, the Dutchman, who's another Jaguar driver, vast experience. Just about 150, just under 150 laps to go here as we're riding in the number eight Toyota with Sakaya. Up front is Caffey in the number five Mazda, running a lap down on the leader. Yannick Dalmas in the Peugeot. So the Mazda already round about two and a half, three minutes off the lead. Sakaya waiting to be shown the gap that he can pass through and set off once again in pursuit of Jan Lammers, his teammate in the number seven Toyota. How much Toyota would love to have a first and second finish here at Suzuka in Japan first though we've got to deal with this Mazda it is a very tight circuit very very little room now with the chance Sakaya through and no response from the Mazda as into the pits comes 
Mauro Baldi in Peugeot number two. This is the car that had the steering problem earlier on. Dropped down to seventh place after a lengthy pit stop. And this looks likely to be another one. So Warwick and Dalmas away at the head of the field. That Peugeot number two has picked up a couple of places after that long stop but now looks destined to spend more time in the pits as the engine cover came off. It did have a power steering problem when Fiddy Ballio drove it in the opening stint and it looks as though it's still afflicting that car. They did change the steering wheel during its last long stop down there. That doesn't seem to have sorted it out and once again more attention required. They'll be very anxious to keep that car operational if only to send it out on the track so that this car number one Dalmas currently driving Derek Warwick waiting down in the pits again to uh, protect this car from any possible further attack from the Toyotas Toyotas seven and eight currently running without problems number four David Tennyson Euro Racing Lola back into the pits having extricated himself and itself from that gravel trap change of tyres will very definitely be necessary lead car already that carbon fibre brake dust showing up on the side of the bodywork there making what was a spotlessly clean car ride at the start of the race just over a couple of hours ago is now starting to look just a little bit work stained skating out Mazda number five that was a fairly lengthy pit stop for Caffey and Sala they've dropped down to sixth place somewhere almost 18 seconds here the lead as far as Dalmas and Warwick are concerned confirmation that it is the Lammers car number seven running immediately behind it on the road and these two cars number one and number seven at Suzuka, seemingly in a class of their own. At last, number two rejoins. Was running in first place right at the very start of the race for about the first 20 laps, but is now down in 10th. Coming out behind it, the Euro Racing Lola number four, two places ahead, that's in eighth place. So Mauro Baldi negotiates his way back out onto the track. It was a power steering problem that afflicted it for the second time and has caused it to drop right down the leaderboard. In fact, almost off the leaderboard. Tenth place. Eleven cars started the race and Peugeot in the unaccustomed position of having the car running next to last. 126.8. That's the difference in time between Peugeot 1 and Peugeot 2 actually on the track considerably more than that in terms of laps because Peugeot 2 has had those two extended pit stops for attention to the steering Paro Baldi seen service not just with Peugeot but also with Porsche in his early days in the sports car championship and later with Mercedes problem here for the number four car the Euro Racing Lola car which we saw off the track and he's off again pulling to a halt 31 laps he's done and that's going to be the end of play for the day as far as he's concerned down in the pits the Euro Racing mechanics can simply just stare at the television screen and wonder when they're going to get their machinery back the Canadian David Tennyson hauls himself out of the cockpit not only just hot but pretty smoky in there from the look at it probably an oil line fractured something like that causing the end of Euro Racing Lola number four still running 44 which is the Nissan Krosnov Martini those Japanese Formula 3000 rivals teaming up here but unable to do anything about Lammers as he thunders on in second place Perhaps still dreaming, wishing indeed that Peugeot number one has some sort of mechanical problem. 
flicks it before the end of the race giving Toyota and Lammers an opportunity to clinch their second victory of the season in the sports car championship Lammers who's always been renowned as one of the fastest drivers in the sports car world will soon have the chance to prove it in Formula One got a lot of work on here if he's going to overhaul the Peugeot on the track once again coming across that FIA Cup car which is the Davina Galitza Harada Yoshikawa Chamberlain Spice bit of a movable chicane but Lama's dealing with it capably enough probably lost no more than a fraction of a second as a result of that but it's amazing how these fractions mount up in a race this duration 1,000 kilometers and about five and a half hours here's Sikaya alongside Kaneshi in the Nissan and he is put down another lap although he's still running in fourth place one place down from Sikaya. It's the number eight Toyota. Kenny Atchison due to take over in the cockpit next. A replay of that. Right underneath the rear wing of the Nissan and then sweeping past. Meanwhile, up front, Dalmas in Peugeot number one just two drivers allocated for this car so massive stints involved here strength sapping conditions heat building up all the time really hasn't put a foot wrong at all number one Peugeot contrast to its teammate Alio and Baldi various problems with the steering which seem to have been cured now. The car running better all the time. To the obvious satisfaction of the Peugeot crew. And that's now up into eighth place. Third place, driver change for Toyota number eight. Kenny Atchison gets his first crack at Suzuka. Takes over from Sakaya. Finds a gear. Rolls forward, finds the track. And uh, out to resume the chase. Onto the track immediately in front of the sole surviving Euro Racing Lola number three, Jesus Pereira from Spain. Driving right in the wheel tracks now of Atchison. These two, a couple of old adversaries from the Sports Car Championship. Pereira, of course, better known as a Porsche driver with the Brun team for a considerable number of years. Here comes. Philippe Alio having taken over from Mauro Baldi at the wheel of number two, being chased by Jan Lammers in Toyota number seven. Number two running seventh, number seven running second, and the Peugeot loses a lap to the second place car. Alio, Alio doesn't look as though he's going to give in too easily here. Staying right with Lammers as they hurtle on round there. Remember that the Toyota car is still a considerable distance behind the lead Peugeot, number one, Dalmas and Warwick. But rather than concentrating on the battle for the lead, he's now got Alio in his mirrors. And Alio doesn't look as though he's actually going to be too satisfied with staying behind the Toyota for long. Race tactics from Peugeot. Always keep one car with the lead Toyota. See that he's almost 40 seconds behind Warwick and Dalmas. 60 laps having been completed. And the number two Peugeot not in the top six. Now ahead of these two. Number five Mazda running in fifth place. Toyota and the Peugeot looking considerably quicker 
Mazda presently in the hands of Alex Caffey. Long stint for him after Mauricio Sandro Sala had started the car. Peugeot and Toyota going to sweep past the Mazda, lets him go, and the Toyota losing ground there to the Peugeot number two. So Alio manages to unlap himself, ground that he'd lost as he came out of the pits to the Toyota number seven is now regained. Well, the Mazda was going slower. We can see there that uh, he's got a drive problem of some description. Needs, be, needs to be pushed away out of the danger area. So, Caffey, in touch with his pit crew by radio, be explaining what happens as the Lees Lammers Brabham Toyota exits the pits and comes out still holding second place running almost a complete lap behind Peugeot number one the lead car Warwick and Dalmas I wonder if they've allowed themselves just a little thought about the possibility that they might have the world title at the end of this race long way to go but the car running absolutely perfectly and both drivers so far unaffected by the heat and the grueling conditions and the demands of this tight Suzuka track Caffey's rolling again managed to get some useful advice over the pits to car radio from his crew down there uh, advice needed here for Andy Wallace in Toyota number eight. Smoke filling the cockpit now, and he's going to have to exit quickly. <sighs> well, somewhere in there is Wallace. Out he comes. Well, not exactly Carl Lewis, but a fair impression. Andy Wallace out of the car, and the marshals need to be quickly on the scene there with a fire extinguisher or two. Otherwise, visibility will be considerably impaired. So the end of the line as far as Andy Wallace and Kenny Atchison and Sakai are concerned at Suzuka. And the Toyota challenge is now down to one. Won't be much left of the in-car camera after this either. Toyota watching part of their investment going up in smoke. So that car, which had run reliably in third place for the bulk of the race so far, is now out of it. And it comes down to a straight battle, it seems, between Peugeot number one and Toyota number seven. Damage beyond repair number eight. Lees, Lammers and Brabham. Lammers must be counting his uh, lucky stars because normally when a problem afflicts the Toyota, he's normally at the wheel. 44, the Nissan, up into third place. Four laps off the lead. And performing superbly. Totally against all expectations. Lead car. Warwick and Dalmas and just eking out a bit more of a lead each lap total domination from the pair that are going for the driver's title Derek Warwick from Britain hoping to follow in the footsteps of Derek Bell and Martin Brundle both of whom the former Formula One drivers who came into sports car racing and clinched the World Drivers' Championship. Derek Bell's case on a couple of occasions. Into the pits comes the leading FIA Cup entry. This is the Chamberlain car, which is now in sixth overall. Ferdinand de Lesseps, who is the champion driver in the FIA Cup, hops out and Nick Adams 
Just having his seat prepared by team boss Hugh Chamberlain. Adams compresses himself into the cockpit of that uh, Spice. Peugeot number two. Well, this one is running better all the time. Now up in fourth place, just ahead there of the Euro Racing Lola number three, Jesus Perea in fifth place. So all problems with that Peugeot now completely eradicated and is in this middle section of the race performed absolutely superbly. Mauro Boldi and Philippe Alio. Two more drivers with Formula One experience. Philippe Alio in particular. And testing 70 odd Grand Prix. Alio, one of the favourites at the start of the season for the driver's title. Well, the Mazda halts in the pits and it looks terminal this time. Not of the head from Caffey and Urino. There goes Peugeot, number one, leading. 49 laps to go. Well, that's the equivalent of virtually a whole Formula One race, but in this instance, we'd call it the closing stages of a 1,000-kilometer sports car race. Just a twitch there. Seen very, very few mistakes from any of the Peugeot drivers. Maybe just the heat starting to tell on the concentration. Caffey and Urino and Pierre Dudonet down there in the Mazda pits discussing exactly what happened to the Mazda which for a long time was running well but is now not going to run any further so after setting its own pace in the middle of this sports car field that is the end of it and the Mazda drops out after 104 laps Perea hands over the Euro Racing Lola number three to Matsuda. Good shot here of all the rigmarole that the drivers have to go through before they can actually let the car roll down the pit road and out onto the track again. Refueled. Retired. <laughs> down the track and out running in fifth place so 40 odd laps to go Martini in the Nissan number 44 running in third place but Brabham in the Toyota number seven right up with him and he could lose a lap here Toyota just waiting to pounce gentlemanly thing done there by Martini and Brabham sets off still a considerable distance between the number seven Toyota in second place and the number one Peugeot which is now going to be calling in for its last pit stop door already open which gives you an idea there that the old heat in the cockpit is proving a wee bit too much for Dalmas Warwick hops in. Smooth, efficient work by Peugeot. It's been a feature of their pit stops since the problems that they had in the very early stages at Monza and then briefly at Silverstone in rounds one and two of the championship. Thomas signaling to Warwick. I think just making sure that the, the drinks bottle was looped up. Warwick goes out for what will be the final stint. Huge lead over the second place Toyota. In the case now of Warwick, provided that not too tired, concentration held, should canter towards the chequered flag. Now, frantic preparations here on the Nissan. 
new nose with headlights as uh, sunset approaches but a long pit stop was running in third place and the number two Peugeot making up time all the time and past the exit to the pit road and going to take third place so the Peugeot number two having dropped down right the way down the leaderboard to 10th place after those steering problems has now surged right back up and is running third so Peugeot first and third Toyota in second place and the Nissan with Krosnoff back at the wheel is going to come back in fourth place so various surprises here at round five of the World Sports Car Championship at Suzuka first of all that the Peugeot afflicted with power steering problems then that the Nissan number 44 keeps going when everybody expected that it would soon fall by the wayside no surprise there about the car that's leading the race Peugeot number one a lap ahead of everybody else five to go Warwick and Dalmas are going to achieve their ambition for the 1992 season and clinch the drivers championship in a long hard grueling race the drivers will be well pleased that the sun has gone down and the heat has gone out of the day absolutely energy sapping five and a half hours 1,000 kilometers around Suzuka that car very much the star of the show Peugeot number two all the difficulties that Valdi and Alio have experienced throughout the day magnificent achievement to get that car back up into third place Peugeot will be the world sports car champions for 1992 and that too a magnificent showing only their second year back in sports car racing Jan Lammers Toyota number seven going past Jesus Pereira and Euro racing Lola number three and that Lola running in fifth place here comes Krosnoff in the Nissan running in fourth place but 20 seconds behind the third place Peugeot now surely impossible to make up that amount of time in the number of laps left nevertheless a great showing from the Nissan from Krosnoff and Martini who've done the bulk of the work in that car from the Toyota as well to run steadily consistently in second place Lees Lammers and David Brabham all putting in good long stints and ensuring that Toyota gets some reward for their efforts in Japan Jeff Lee's delighted Glenn Waters and David Brabham which leaves Jan Lammers actually at the wheel out on the track flags being prepared for the championship celebrations for Peugeot for Warwick and for Dalmas now as they approach the final lap formation Le Mans style finish for Peugeot their car number one running in first place the number two car in third and in between Jan Lammers in Toyota number seven and he's going to try and disrupt this Peugeot showpiece less than a couple of minutes of this race to go in a fascinating battle between Peugeot and Toyota Peugeot too strong for Toyota in the end but Lammers on this final lap is going to make sure that he's in every single headline grabbing picture that he possibly can be he's going to shadow that number two Peugeot all the way home and if possible force his way in between Warwick and Baldi Lammers the party pooper has another look as uh, Baldi runs a wee bit wide at the hairpin
Toyota though deservedly in the frame because without them it really wouldn't have been any sort of battle at all in the sports car championship this year Fergio had just been allowed to gallop away with it they won the first race at Monza Toyota and they came close here before eventually succumbing to the superior talents of the new world sports car champions Yannick Dalmas, Derek Warwick and uh, Peugeot. Interesting developments on the horizon surely what will happen with these two manufacturers Peugeot and Toyota. Stay in the world sports car championship or does Formula One beckon? Checkered flag waves. Dalmas and Warwick another victory for them another victory for Peugeot and the French manufacturer has done it in the land of Toyota of Nissan and Mazda Peugeot first and third Toyota in second place and running in fourth place and a great achievement the Nissan number 44 turbo car the one which nobody expected to finish coming in eight laps short of the lead over five and a half hours of racing over 1,000 kilometers around Suzuka 27 laps covering the top six delight for Peugeot for Dalmas and for Derek Warwick um, well for me the, uh, the race was very difficult because uh, it was very hot at the start and um, the first thing for me was uh, very very hot and I thought that it would be a very difficult race um, but as the race uh, got on and I done the second, third and the fourth stint, um, I have to admit that it got easier, so uh, I, physically it wasn't so bad. Um, the car was, was fantastic, uh, the, it ran absolutely perfect, uh, the tyres, the Michelin tyres were brilliant and uh, the car just never missed a beat, so uh, for us it was uh, a fairly easy race as far as mechanically is concerned. The thoughts of new champion Warwick. Four Peugeot drivers in the top five, just Jeff Lees from Toyota, as Warwick and Dalmas clinch the title. Uh, Peugeot have done uh, a lot of work this year, and uh, as I said in the press conference yesterday, they've done a fantastic job this year. We've been going three and four seconds quicker. Although the grids have been very small, uh, the racing has been very fast at the front end with the Toyota, uh, the Peugeot and uh, the Mazda sometimes. Um, but for me, uh, I think the, the Peugeot Sport has done a fantastic job. Um, we've won them all this year, we've won the Constructors' Championship and we've also won the Drivers. Derek Warwick underlining the extent of Peugeot's domination throughout the 1992 season so far. 33 points ahead with another round to go an achievement there for the Chamberlain team within an ace of snatching third place in the World Championship overall the Chamberlain crew up on the podium at Suzuka Ferdinand de Lesseps with a magnificent century he's won all five races in the FIA Cup can he make it six out of six the clean sweep on home ground in the next round Chamberlain with the FIA Team Cup to add to the Group C2 world title that they won a couple of years ago after Suzuka Manny Kaur in mid-October comes next the champions Peugeot back on home ground what a final last incentive for Toyota and Mazda to impress